I'm really getting the hang of this. Okay, so we are back. We are back. I hope you guys are like recu recuperated um, from Banana Sandwichville here lately. We have indeed cracked the case wide open here lately. Um, every time I think the live is like the most craziest live I've ever seen in my life, another one happens. And then another one happens. And, and by golly, Jeepers, another one's going to happen today. But let me see what's going on in the chat box as 60 of you are coming in. If you guys don't mind, go on and hit that like and or subscribe button, um, notification bell if you want to. And if you get want to get like real fancy, if you want to get like real snazzy for me, hit that share button one time for me. And no matter what platform it is, just be like, bloop, quick. It's like, hey, this guy's done all this assembling. The least I can do is just click around with my mouse a little bit as I'm entertained here for about three hours. <laughs> so without further ado, man, I'm going to blow your guys' minds tonight again. Um, welcome, everyone. I see you. Miss M is up here, as always. And Stephanie and Christy and Miss Karen and Val. And I mean, all you got Stephanie, Yashi, uh, Christy, Neil, Jason Cooley. What's up, man? Um, Amy B. Is that my wife, Amy B? Or is that the other Amy B? I have to be careful because there's apparently another Amy B following my channel, which is okay. All Amy B's are welcome, but there's only one real Amy B, and that's my wife. I'm thinking that's her. Maybe that's her. I don't know. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are ready for this because it's going to be crazy. Okay. Oh, so. The other Amy B. It has been established. Okay. So here we go. I am going to open this can of worms. The first thing I got to do, as always, is do a little recap and a little bit of, um, I guess, urgent news. Okay. Um, while I'm telling you guys something, I want to tell you, um, I want to be pulling something up in the background here. I want to tell you, okay. There's been a lot of predictions made over the last, I don't know how many, maybe thousands of years. And like, there's been a lot of predictions made in the last couple of hundred years that are very, very significant. Very few people have gotten the courage and the nerve to be like, I believe this is real. I'm going to say something and observe the evidence. Some decided to step up on things like biblical cosmology, which is incredible. It's, it's amazing that people finally found out that the very first page of their Bible tells them they do not live on a spinning ball of water in a space vacuum. <laughs> it's nice to know that people at least read the first page, not to mention the 200 other verses that teach that. Um, there's a lot. But people were scared to speak up. You know why? Because the government has made you so many people. I was at one point scared to say things because people disappear out of nowhere. You ever wonder if the people that disappeared are people that they really might have <laughs> created to disappear? I need you guys to think hard about how narrow the way is into the kingdom. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, there's a bug flying around in this really hot sauna barn that I'm sitting in right now. I am just in a barn. There's no like green screen behind me or anything. I'm just in a barn with a computer and a microphone. Um, but <clears throat> back to this. Okay. Some people spoke up about 9-11. Very big tragedy. Not to be underplayed by no means. There was a few people that spoke up about things like Pearl Harbor and about the bombing campaigns. Lately, there's been a lot of people speaking up about Tartaria and the millennial reign possibly coming and or going. Or been and we're in a short season, you know, we're not talking about any of that tonight. Um, there's been a lot, but I want to say this. Do you know what's crazy is like people nowadays aren't even doing the one biggest prophecy that every single culture I have proved lately has prophesied since the beginning of time. Like, <clears throat> okay, if you go back to pre-flood, okay? 
even then, even though in your Bibles, it's only like six chapters and the world gets flooded. You got to understand there was other books. And there's also the whole book of Enoch, which is talking about the watchers and the ones that were here and all these things and their curse and how some of the Titans were bound beneath the face of the earth. And some of them were bound out in, in literally these chambers of outer dark, darkness. OK, um, that's all in there. And so a few people read that and they've spoken up about, hey, giants were real. Titans are real. All that stuff is real and gravy. But they forget that a lot of Enoch was taken out because of the fact that it points to things that are to come really soon now. Pre-flood, if you read just Genesis chapter 1, 1, 2, and 3. You read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and darkness was over and darkness and void was over the face of the um, deep. And the spirit of God hovered over those waters. You know, and then it's the let there be light after he did what? Well, he separated the waters. OK. Separated the deep. And he separated the waters from above the firmament from under the firmament and the waters that remained. He called the sea. And then he pulled up Pangea. And then he pulled man up out of dirt, Pangea, meaning everything before that was made out of water. We've covered all that stuff in depth in like a lot of lot, like live streams over the past. OK. But one thing people miss is that English language hides a lot like that word deep. You know, there was. Darkness over the face of the deep. See, that hides a lot like the fact that the deep is a deity found in the rest of your Bible. OK, and also in other cultures like. The deep being Atlas being the face, the face of Atlas, the one that holds up the firmament. OK. And there's also wrath that was over the face of the deep Leviathan. The son of darkness. The wrath that was over the face of the deep. OK, Tiamat, if you want to be specific in like the Bible. And then it talks about Leviathan later and later gives it a different name. OK, all that's in your Bible. And one thing that it talks about is the fact that it was imprisoned and pushed aside for a reason, including that wrath that was over the face of the deep was taken by God, the most high and separated and pushed away. OK. Now, here we go. Why were they separated and why were they held back? Why didn't he just zoom? Well, it wouldn't serve any purpose. Remember, Enoch makes it clear that those things are going to be used later for God's work. And God's work, whether it's how we see it as good or bad, is ultimately good. And balance and order is a necessary thing. He pushed Leviathan to the side because Job tells us word for word that the final thing that must take place in this world is God is going to send his wrath down against Satan's wrath. His sword, which is Christ, the word, which is Yeshua, is going to be fighting against Satan's son, Leviathan, which is Loki's son, Jormungandr, which is Apollo's fight with the dragon, which is Beowulf and the dragon, which is the story of Thor, and also the Jormungandr, his enemy, Loki's son. All throughout everything. The final thing that's supposed to ever happen in this world is that. There's supposed to be a final battle. Everything's supposed to go really dark. Like, ooh, darkness, scary. And then all of a sudden, Jordan Gunder, Leviathan, Tiamat, rises, that ancient serpent, that dragon, rises up out of the sea. And Jordan Gander, meaning Earth's necklace, Jordan Gander being this big old giant snake that's waiting in the bottom of the ocean right now, right? For those of you, oh, not that one, that's Atlantis. For those of you that have been following along, you know that that's Jordan Gander, the giant sea serpent that waits and encompasses the Earth with the snake's tail in its mouth. And Jordan Gander, and even in the Bible, Leviathan is the guardian of the abyss. 
Jordan Gonder in Nordic is the guardian of indeed the abyss, the underworld, and Apep the serpent in Egyptian mythology is the guardian of the underworld. <laughs> and uh, we can go on and on and on and on and on as we have lately. But he guards the underworld and he controls it, opens and releases. Okay, the belly of the beast. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, it's said in, in Nordic that the giant sea serpent, Jordan Gander, an earth's necklace, will release its tail from its mouth, uncovering the abyss and start releasing its titans of old. The first one always I have pointed out to you guys was always, 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 always. By the way, Jordan Gander. Here he is. Jordan Gander. Jordan Gander. Jordan Gander. And on the map, Jormungandr, you can read that there, J-O-R-M-U-N-D, Jormungandr, encircling the Earth's giant tree. Earth snake. Also, as above, so below, you can see the dragon's head literally at the light source at the top, the dragon eating its tail. As above, so below. I can also pull up the Ouroboros. And then all the portal obsessions with Entrances like in the movies Gulliver's Travels, Wizard of Oz, um, Percy Jackson. Um, we've got, I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean, everything you can imagine portals being vortexes. And in your Bibles as well, you remember Elijah was taken up in a what? A whirlwind. And also, God, whenever he would speak, he would speak through a whirlwind of fire or cloud. Or water. Anyway, we talked about all that in depth. And we also talked about every time there's a, a vortex, there is indeed a other side of the rainbow. I need you guys to look in the background at the evil queen and her bubble in the sky. The light bearing queen in the Emerald City that we've talked about as well. And then you have the bad witch on the other side of the tornado. We've talked about that pretty much in depth. though. My point of bringing this up is, is something happened today, guys. As of like literally... A cut, like an hour before I went live, I was doing some more studying on some Titans because we're going to go in depth about what I believe the order of events is. And I've already told you guys, I believe Kraken was the first one that we saw. And I've already pointed out every single proof of that. I also told you guys that I believe Meg Ladon, literally, it looks like a big dorsal field pushing dorsal fin pushing out two big waves on the side was this next anomaly that came out of the snake's tail where his mouth opens okay we saw that but guess what happened today guys literally an hour before i got up here i think i was the first one to see it because i checked this app every like hour hour two and a half no, no joke i'm not kidding when i say that i really think i'm the only one that knows this until i posted it on facebook and a lot of people started seeing it like 30 minutes ago i want to show you guys something okay here we go. I'm going to try and do my screen share like I did last night. Okay. Okay. And I took this and I pulled it over here. My screen share should be coming up now. I'm uh, hoping. Um, let me make sure I got, I don't think, I think it's black right now. And that's okay. I'm just trying to get it right right now. Um, I was trying to change it up a little bit because I really wasn't going to do this. This was an emergency. Somebody already dropped off because I messed up on this part. But hold on one sec. Um, stop screen share. It's not the right screen. Is what the problem was. All right, screen share. Here we go. Let's do a window. We're gonna do indeed that window. Share. Okay, I got it. Three, two, one, and it is loading. I don't know why it's not showing unless it don't want you guys to see this. This is crazy. Huh? Now that's not good at all. course well there's one thing left to do i guess go old school all right youtube is now officially trying to get involved it seems share screen i'm just going to do the entire screen and share it says this okay there i hate this screen and i'm very sorry to those that have like motion sickness and they see that stuff happening okay but it is what it is okay I'm going to put this over here so I can still see what's going on with you guys. But in the meantime, I'm going to pull up this over here. 
Okay. My son has my phone inside tonight, so I can't have my second window source for me to really see what you guys see. But here, I want to take you guys to my Facebook page and show you guys what just happened. So I was flipping through my phone. <laughs> That's my beautiful daughter there being funny. All right. I was flipping through my phone and I have this app that you're seeing here. Okay. And on this app here, I check all the time. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. This is the third anomaly that come out and this anomaly is different. Okay. Like way different than the second and kind of like the first, but the second one showed two different alleys. But look, here's what happened. This is today, the 23rd, all of a sudden coming, literally you can see this thing coming out of the portal up until 11 PM. So they're everything from here. I need you guys to understand that everything from here is what they're projecting to happen. So if you see this thing like spew out right now, like pouring stuff out in the water, that's only what they're projecting to happen. Remember last time their projection showed a whole lot different until the octop, the Kraken came out and you could see the full shape of it. And then they deleted it off. And I proved that as well. But see, this one's different here. Okay. This is, this is 5 a.m. on Friday. So it hasn't gotten here yet. This is what they're projecting. As of right now, this very moment, 8 p.m. That still hasn't even gotten there. I told you guys, I call this thing when it was coming out, 2 p.m. Between 2 and 5, this is what was going on here. I want you to understand that. Okay? Um, I need to go back here and make sure my screen share is working. Hey, guys. 33 of you. Very Freemasonic. Um, I need you guys to tell me if you saw that. Randy, wait. Oh, Randy, Randy, Randy. Keep Randy in your prayers, everybody. Um, I noticed that's going on as well. I'm very, very sorry, Randy. But yes, y'all saw that. Okay, I see that, Miss Kelly. Great. I need you to know, guys, that is real. Okay? And like I said, everything from there is projected. However, you know me. <laughs> you need to know this. Me. I know that I checked in and zoomed in, projected 85 to 86 foot waves. Watch what they're, see, look, you'll see it yourself. 84, this is what projected. 84 foot waves is what they're projecting of this Titan. What that means is this is the water massing up. This is a lift. The buoys sit in the water, okay? That's me screenshotting it right there. I was like, what in the world is happening right now? <laughs> Don't freak out. But this one's projected a whole lot worse than that first one. You need to understand that this one, whatever they're projecting, is a lot worse than the first one that ended up in the Atlantic that had the exact same form as the Kraken. Okay? Okay. Yes, we're still good. So, no, that's not, it's not Jormungandr. That's not Jormungandr. It's important to know Jormungandr is the last one to come. You won't see him coming. The Earth's going to go dark and black. Literally. Do you know why? Because that thing is going to black out the sun. It says the sun and moon and everything will hide at that point. You know why? They're not hiding from Jordan They're hiding from the one coming to kill him. Woohoo! That's so cool how the Bible works, works like that, right? But here's the thing, okay? Um... Jormungandr guards the abyss. When Every time he comes out, it's said that Jormungandr lifts his tail, opens the abyss. He says he causes tsunamis and waves as he's releasing the things from the abyss. And then he puts his tail back in his mouth until he's ready to release again. Okay? So, each one of this is something huge coming out of the ocean. Um, somebody said, oh, it's waves, got it now. It's, it's, you got, this is what I was trying to tell you. It's not that it's waves, God. All right, the world, the NASA has you believing that we live on a spinning ball of water in a space vacuum and all the waves and stuff are going different ways and all this stuff as the world's spinning one direction at a thousand miles per hour. Everything else, including volcano stacks of smoke, you know, you don't see any of that. But my thing is this, they try to hide a lot of stuff. These buoys in the ocean are all set with a depth meter where they're sitting at the same height, you know, like a level, you know? They're sitting at the same height. So when they rise or fall, they can pick up on things. Whether it's you thinking it's a wave or not, that's on you. What this shows is this water was lifted up out 80 some foot higher than, than its average level. Now, what that means is this. How could a wave start small and go out like that? 
but something from the bottom of the ocean with a big head. All right, for example, let's zoom in here. Let's, all right, here's, here's this, right? From the bottom of the ocean, you know, you'd see if my hand's coming up, you know, the first thing you see is like my knuckles, but then you see my whole hand coming up. Okay. It'd be like, okay. So here it comes across the screen. The only thing you'd see at first is like a little bit. Boom. Just I am. All right. So here's that. Okay. There's, there's officially three beasts in the ocean and I believe there's a lot more. I think that no joke. I think the Pacific ocean hides far more secrets than the Atlantic ocean. I've covered that kind of in depth. But a lot of you guys don't know that I have a whole lot older YouTube video lives where I talked about the bells from the Nazi party and how they got from one side of the earth to the other and bells in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I already covered that in depth. So if you're like, whoa, how did he talked about that? And Miss Kelly Estevez and all of them that's been following me a long time, they're like, yeah, he talked about that. And I'm like, yep. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know. It, okay. Something is going on here with Jason as well. I'm sorry. I just keep seeing something happening in the chat box. I am three days into laying down my cigarettes after. Oh, yeah. Woo. All right. That's awesome, Jason. Keep it going. Just know this. Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He said that when people look upon him, they look the other way until what? Until he spoke in a way. Okay. You know, our flesh is one thing. Our inside of our bodies is one thing. But, you know, our father sees our hearts. He sees things that nobody sees that you don't even see within yourself. When your purpose comes in life, no, no joke, you're not even going to remember cigarettes and things of that sort. Just keep on going. But anyway, I, I need to keep on going for sure. Keep, keep going, Jason. But anyway, here's this. You ready? Um. So I showed you guys the Jormungandr, right? And then I showed you three different, there's officially three things in the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to cover with those maybe Sunday night live about what I believe the order of the Titans is going to be, okay? So here's this. Now that I've got my screen share going, I'm going to get into the very big topic that was originally going to be the whole thing for tonight, okay? 117 of you. If you have not watched the last three lives or four lives that I've done, not to mention the other 40 some, and then ultimately like the 500 some lives I've done on Facebook before this, I'm going to encourage you guys to at least go back and watch the last three, if not the last two lives I've done. Um, we have been in depth about a John, a whole lot of Johns that I went to an island and in that island, they would go to a volcano and they would explore into the hollow earth. We also read a lot about a lot of Johns that would go in submarines into the bottom of the ocean and were known for discovering the beast of the deep. We also read about a lot of Johns that are in movies that are known for bringing destruction by opening an abyss and bringing things up. We talked about Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Black Rock Johnson in depth, the black horse. And we've whoa, really hit on his 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 case pretty hard. This is for entertainment purpose, also purposes only. Um, what else am I supposed to say? I can't even remember the rest of it, but YouTube knows what I'm trying to say. All right. Here's this, okay? We talked about all that. So if some of the stuff I'm telling you now is like, whoa, this is intense. You should, you should have heard it before. But this is about to get crazy for those that have been following along. I want you to know that right now. Okay? Here it goes. Update Erica says that the south of Brazil is flooding very bad right now. Do you guys know the the old flood maps, the projected flood maps? Okay, where it says, hey, this is what's coming at some point, the Navy flood maps. Well, those Navy flood maps are real for a reason. Okay. Um, whoops. I believe they're set up for what's coming right now. When it says everyone will flee to the mountains in those days and hide in their bunkers, like on the movie The One Hundred, like in every single other apocalyptic movie like that. Okay. But anyway. Oh, snap. The ocean was sucked off the coast of Africa. And what that is, is a pulling in. Because, you know, 
You know what a portal does when it opens in the movies, right? This is going to blow your minds. Well, every time it sucks the water in. Okay. It has to do that. Do you know why it has to do that? Well, it has to do that because when you flush a toilet, it does the exact same thing. And whatever you put in there, your toilet paper and poopy becomes a submarine on its way down a portal. <laughs> and that's why in Atlantis, he says, it's just a drain pipe. It's just a drain pipe. Before he ended up in Atlantis in the air bubble under the sea. Okay. But here we go. This is going to be nuts. Watch. You ready? I'm just making sure my screen share is keeping going tonight because it didn't work before like I want it to. And I know there's 125 here. If you guys can wait, I would love to try and get this pulled up the other way. Okay. So give me one second to try and get it pulled up the other way, if you don't mind. And while you're waiting, if you want to hit pause and hit the like, share, and or subscribe button, that would be fabulous. Just to get a little jump in the algorithm, not for anything to do with my glory is for his glory. So here we go. I'm going to try this again. Present. I'm going to try and just share only um that one and we're gonna go from there let's see what happens yeah Ooh -hoo. all right i am pumped up now this is incredible all right so i'm now now what's gonna happen is this i'm gonna put this one over here and then i'm going to have my other stuff pulled up over here so i can read it there it goes oh man we're in, we're cooking right now it's about to be amazing okay all right so here we go so guys, remember the John thing? There was a lot of Johns we covered, right? A whole lot of Johns, including John in the Bible who went to an island <laughs> and he saw all kinds of things and beasts coming out of the abyss. John in the Bible as well. We talked about all of those and it was incredible. It was a really, really fun journey. But then there's this. Let's start the ride right now. The first thing we're going to talk about tonight is this, okay? All right, so. <clears throat> Ooh. Last night, me and my family, you know, we don't have movie nights to, like, watch something really for, uh, I don't know how to explain this, just to watch it anymore. At first, it got on my son's nerves what we do. What we do at nighttime is we find something to put on, and we look for ways to expose things within it decode it like as a family it's incredible amy's like poof 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 and brayden's like pew, 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 pew. and i'm like <laughs> well anyway so when that happens i end up going live the next day well last night brayden was like let's decode um Space Jam, okay? And I was like, cool, classic. 1990s cassette edition only Space Jam, right? In the plastic case. It's like, no, no. Hey, I went in there and him and his mom were watching Space Jam 2, okay? You guys are like, Michael Jordan's not in Space Jam 2. Michael Jordan is in Space Jam 2. They purposely mistaken <laughs> mistake him and bring in michael b jordan okay and then there's michael kane we talked about last night okay my point is this tonight we're going to be talking about somebody completely different than john okay first let's start with the bible okay i'm gonna get the bible put up here okay for you guys this is gonna be so much fun i'm so excited to talk to you guys tonight just want you to know that okay Let's just look up. All right. So if you're ever looking up a specific angel or somebody in the Bible, you do this. You type M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Michael. Let's see if Michael's in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's the angel Michael in Revelation and in Daniel. Okay. Where it talks about Michael being the prince. Right. And then it talks about here, Michael being an arch archangel when contending with the devil. Now, this is talking about Michael being the one to contend with the devil, which Revelation says is that ancient dragon, that serpent, that devil, right? He disputed about the body of Moses. Okay, well, we ain't got to read into all this, but here's this. There's going to be so much more, okay? Here's Michael again here. He's always, always the one to bind and imprison and capture 
And also he is the restrainer when it says in Revelation that the restrainer is set loose because Michael stands up and the restrainer is set loose. Remember, it says that in your Bible. That's the last thing that happens as well as that happens. Well, it's crazy because ring has Saturn, which represents Satan has rings restraining it, and NASA is saying its rings are dissipating, disappearing right now. Now think about Jordmengander imprisoning the Earth, circling the Earth, and chambering the Earth. And as above, so below, everything we've been talking about before, you know, that stuff, crazy stuff. But Michael in the Bible is always, always, always the one to capture, imprison, and bind, and imprison is the main thing. Like, for example, you remember it says that he would give up a great shout and Michael would come and bind Azazel, that great dragon, that serpent, for what? A thousand years for the reign of Christ, right? That's what it says. And it says after the 1,000 years that Michael would stand up. Okay? After, after the 1,000 year reign, Satan is set loose again. You need to understand that. At, in Revelation 20, it says word for word. After the 1,000 years, Satan is set loose. For what? For a short season to stir up the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and assemble them for war. And it says they're going to circle and encamp. They're going to circle the encampment of the saints. And then it says, as soon as they set foot into the land, they love fire is going to come down from heaven and consume them. And then great white throne judgment happens after that. Great white throne judgment has nothing to do with the 1,000 year reign. You guys need to understand that. Okay. So here's this. Michael is also referred to as heaven's destroyer. Okay. It's also, it's important to know that <laughs> he's the one that binds prisons. He's the bad boy with the sword. Okay. Now here's this. I bring him up because of this. This is where it gets crazy. I started thinking about John and Patmos, right? John and Patmos. There's only one other person mentioned in Revelation. Michael. There's literally, so there's John, and then there's Christ who presents himself. It says word for word, no joke. And that's why he says all glory to him over and over again, okay? But then there's Michael. Only would you read about other than Satan. No joke, okay? And that's for a reason. Because of this. This rabbit hole we're on right now is, is is huge. Remember, John went to the island, but he went to the island to do what? He all he saw Michael stand up, the restrainer stand up and, and open the abyss. This is where things get crazy. Okay. So I was like, wonder what Michael has to do with time traveling. So I started thinking about movies. With I want to I want to I want to um do this real quick. I started thinking about movies with strictly. Um, Michael's, John's, or Cain's that would be in charge of either discovering an island full of beasts, discovering beast, discovering a portal leading to Nephilims like Looney Tunes and then the Space Jam creatures, okay? Or either, you know, all things of that sort, entering portals, all that stuff. I was like, I'm going to do a big deep dive today and I'm going to just pull things up for these guys just to see in an in inevitable truths in their face. Okay, this is Gary gets nuts. Michael Jordan, number 23. It's important to know that. Just like Le LeBron James, King James, number 23. It's very important to know about Michael Jordan here. Michael Jordan did something very, very important. Washington is where my next deep dive and stuff is going to be because you see Washington's everywhere. But anyway, Michael Jordan's important because of this. He went to United, I mean, he went to UNC. Tar Heels, where he was first a ram. He was a ram there for a little bit, but then he graduated and became a bull. After he was a bull for a bit, he became a wizard. And after he was done being a wizard, he shot his final shot ever at 6.6 .6 seconds on the shot clock to win by six points. But then after that, he went from being this he was the ram to a bull. <laughs> To a wizard, to the goat, the greatest of all time. All of those are Baphomets, by the way. Okay. Now, let's look at the Bron James, King James. He even had the name, the reason, the way to do that. Okay. It's important to know that he was in the second one, carrying forward the tradition of 23, 6. 
Okay. And also there's a whole movie about the deep dives of 23. If you guys want to get into it, it's pretty awesome with Jim Carrey. If you're like me and you like numbers. Okay. So Michael Jordan. Okay. In space jam where he goes through a portal. He goes through the Warner brothers portal. Okay. Do you know how he gets there? Well, he's playing golf with his friends and he gets sucked into a golf hole into the hollow earth to get to space. Think about it. Same thing. Okay. Here it goes. Michael Jordan instantly made me think of Space Jam, right? Space Jam, I started looking at Space Jam. I was like, I wonder if Michael Jordan's in Space Jam too. No, he's not. And this Michael B. Jordan instead, right? But he made me think about Wakanda and everything else. So I started diving in that and looking at all the Johns and then the Michaels involved in that. But you know, Michael B. Jordan in Wakanda Forever, do you know what he is? He's the bad guy the anti bad the antichrist in that one okay he's he's black panther's enemy and um literally know what he does he brings up his own tribe against the other nephilim against the raphaim just like michael jordan brings against the warner brothers looney tunes against the space creatures same exact thing happening there in a different movie wakanda forever right and then atlantis was in the last one perfect OK, so I was like, this is nuts that this happened here. Then I was like, I wonder what this dude has. I wonder what this guy has in common with Apollyon, the destroyer. Well, guys, don't you remember this dude was in Fantastic Four? Don't you remember what he played? He was hot and cold. OK, he's also the clumsy one considered the destroyer, just like who? Johnny Blaze. Oh, snap. Are you seeing where that's going? He plays Johnny Blaze. Do you know what they do in this movie? Well, they go to another planet where they come back completely different and they have to fight a war against Dr. Doom and the things that he brings forth. Exact same thing. Michael P. Jordan playing John. Okay. It's weird, right? Same thing, though. Weird, though, right? And then I was like, but wait, I'm looking for something dealing with Apollyon. Apollo. Well, don't you know he is Apollo? He's Apollo Creed in Apollo 1, 2, and 3. He is indeed Apollo. Okay? He's Apollo Creed. Michael V. Jordan. And we could go on and on and on with him. But I have so much more I'd rather show you than just Michael B. Jordan. And Michael Jordan. Both of them making sacrifices and doing all of those things with their families to get to where they are. This is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, let's go a little further. I'm going to exit Michael Jordan now. And I'm going to exit Michael B. Jordan. And we're going to go to Michael Kane. Do you remember Michael Kane from my last three decodes? Michael Kane is a very, very important character, guys. Don't you remember? He didn't go to the Mysterious Island once. He didn't go to the Mysterious Island twice. He went to the Mysterious Island multiple times. Remember? Well, number one was here. Remember Journey to the Center of the Earth? He was the grandpa of the kid that went to the island. He was the only one there, and he discovered all these creatures in this crazy island and a volcano that leads to the center of the Earth and all this other crazy stuff. Well, don't you remember also that he was John Mann or John? Yeah, John Mann. He was the one in Interstellar who went through the portal, who told them and set up the whole mission for them to go into the heavens to discover the new planets and everything else. How did they do it? They went through a black hole, a whirlwind, a portal. All because of who? Michael Caine. Michael Caine, who was playing John. <laughs> man, man on the moon. Okay, now here is this big old rabbit hole. I was like, but Caine, you know, I've been telling everybody since the beginning, Caine's the wonder of the earth. Caine's a very, very important character. Caine and his seed line. Okay, remember, God, God made it very clear from the beginning that there was two different things. There was darkness on one side and there was light on the other because he caused the separation and it mixed in because of the, the downfall of sin. OK, and then he literally looks at Satan and he looks at Adam and he says, I'm going to put enmity hatred between your offspring and her offspring, Satan. OK, meaning this, that's why exactly why Cain killed Abel. And then every single descendant of Cain matches the descendant of um seth it's weird like it breaks off like there's two enochs there's two methuselahs there's two lamechs there's two of everybody because it's a, a a good and an anti of each okay and he was also marked just like 
Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was marked as a beast when he was cast to a beast for seven years into the wilderness, just like Nimrod was changed into a beast when he was turned into an ape-like creature for saying he would assemble to the heavens, just like everybody else that was turned to apes or elephants or scattered about the earth. Okay. Then we also know Esau was turned into a hairy beast. Okay. When his brother had to literally cover himself with her hair and the garment of Adam in order to even trick his dad into that whole thing, which leads to the Edomites and also the Kandahar giant. This is for entertainment purposes only in Afghanistan for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> okay. We know Cain is very, very, very important because of two ball Cain, because, you know, Enoch, bad Enoch, became Metatron when he took on his daddy and became Enoch Cain, the first one, literally Osiris risen. The first time Amun Ra took place was in old ancient Egypt when the blue and red, I mean, when the green and blue mixed together and he created Osiris risen, which he took on his daddy. Okay. Then that happened again when Tubal tricked his dad into shooting the beast that Enoch was turned into, into the field. He tricked him into shooting the beast that said to have a horn. Okay. This is where the elk lodge and everything else comes from and unicorns. Okay. And then Tubal dies and becomes Tubal Cain, who becomes Gilgamesh, the master welder, <laughs> who built an ark for the Nephilim beneath the face of the earth. One was floating above, one was below in the hollow earth. Which is why the Bible says, word for it, he destroyed what was on the face of the earth. Okay. So Cain's very, very important because, like I said, in every single story, Cain is Apollyon, Cain is Nimrod, Cain is Gil Gilgamesh, Cain is Nebuchadnezzar, Cain is Pharaoh, given another chance at the end. Cain is Apollyon, the destroyer at the end as well. Who is what? Well, the son of the morning, El Helel ben Shahar, Lucifer, the son of Satan. Helel is light bearer, okay? Lucifer, the light bearer, okay? Helel ben is son of, Shahar is the morning, the morning star being the lesser light, Satan. The greater light is Christ, which is the bright morning star. Okay, two different things going on there. So I started looking at Michael Caine and his many journeys into the abyss. Remember, the abyss is the above and beneath. You need to understand that. And there's entrances that I've covered in depth. So I started looking at the movies he was in, and I was blown away by these things. Okay. Once again, I would have to prove that this man is tied into some either apocalyptic stuff, Armageddon stuff, or whatever. Well, if you read through his movies that he's been in, a lot of you guys already know, just Interstellar alone is a big one, okay? But he's got the eagle has landed. <laughs> he's got, which is right along with Interstellar and stuff. He's got the Poseidon Adventure, okay? He's got the hand where he's got like two different personalities going on there. He's got the island, okay? All these same things, the mysterious island, same thing going on. I was like, what is going on with this man? And why is he doing all the same thing as Tom Hanks did when he was Joe and his adventure to the, um, at Joe in the volcano, right? <laughs> it's like, I was like, what's going on here? Something is really happening. And here's this tie-in with Jaws again. I want you to know this is the like fifth or sixth person that's tied in with Jaws, which is a beast of the sea, the demon of the deep Meg as well. Crazy, right? So I was like, man, that's crazy. Now he's got the Michael the Destroyer. Okay. He's got Michael the Portal Goer, and he's got Kane, and we have him in movies. But would you guess what movie he plays in? Um, oh yeah, this is what I want to show you. Check this out. He actually plays a guy named John in a movie where he has an alternate personality where he has like um like the hand that he cuts off goes and tries to kill his wife. <laughs> Crazy. Which the hand, you know, ties in also with Game of Thrones, which John is tied in also with that. Jon Snow, the king of the north, who discovered what? The Nephilims of the beyond the ice wall. Jon Snow. <laughs> and then you got this, okay? I told you, this dude is in deep with this John stuff. He plays John Preston in The Fourth Protocol. You ever seen that? Well, he does. <laughs> it's just, it's just, Y'all can go a deep dive with him and Quicksand, which is a portal sinking you to the underworld. He plays John McKenzie. <laughs> and then is anybody there? John Crowley. <laughs> now you see me too, meaning he comes back again. Time Traveler. He plays a guy named John there. Batman. 
He is the discoverer of Batman. Don't you know that he was also Batman's Alfred? <laughs> oh. But let's go, but let's go past this, John. And let's let's look, let's look at first night. <laughs> look, I don't even want to I don't want to look in John anymore because it's just big enough. It's just we've already Captain Nemo. No way. All right. I gotta get past it. I gotta get. I gotta get past Michael Caine because we talked. This whole thing started with Captain Nemo. If you're three decodes deep on this, so let's look past Michael Caine and the hand I was telling about, where Michael Caine literally plays John Lansdale here. Okay, I'm gonna look past that, and we're gonna go on to John Michael Graham. Do you guys know what John Michael here? By the way, this is John Michael. The words we're looking for are John Michael and Caine. Do you know who John Michael Graham is? Well, and what he's known for? Well, he's known for the movie Halloween, guys. I want you to know that. It's very important that he's known for the movie Halloween. And also, he's known for Journey into the Jungle and Animal Kingdom, which is important. <laughs> but that's not what I want to look into. I wanted to give his tie-in with Halloween because of this. Do you know who's behind a lot of stuff in Halloween? Well, him. Let's look at this. Don't you know that Halloween is written by John Carpenter? <laughs> well, don't you know he also writes the things about vampires, too, coming up? <laughs> so there's John Carpenter's Halloween, and we got the John, the Michael John in there, too, as one of the main characters, okay? But that's nothing. That didn't mean nothing. That's just, I was like, that's got to be a coincidence, as the Americans would always say, right? So I started thinking about elections. I was like, okay, I've seen John Michael. I've seen a John Michael Kane. Let's look for a John Kane in our presidency. I was like, John McCain. <laughs> Don't you know this? This is going to blow your minds, 131 of you. Don't you know that John McCain was succeeded by John Kyle? But also, he was preceded by John Jacob Rhodes. But then he was succeeded again by John Jacob Rhodes III. <laughs> Well, you need to look in depth about those Johns and this Barry. Here comes the next thing. John was preceded by Barry Goldwater. You're like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, don't you know that John McCain, guys, is known for going up against Barack Obama? But don't you know that Barack Obama won <laughs> and that Barack Obama accidentally calls his wife Michael? All the time. And don't you know that Barack's not his name? But like I said, John McCain was preceded by Barry, but not this Barry, another Barry. But he was also preceded here by Barry Obama, who calls his wife Michael. Right? Well, watch this, guys. It gets crazier. Way crazier. Because guess what? As soon as he got in, well, he, he got with another John Michael. This guy. And let me tell you what he shared. <laughs> this is John Lewis. And he said, um... Where is it at? And my brother's keeper. If someone had not reached out to me, in my case, it was Dr. King. I don't know where I would be today. One man like President Obama can make a significant difference in the lives of these young men. And I applaud the president for throwing them a lifeline to let them know someone they admire and respect wants to help them succeed. So I need to joke. Another John Michael Lewis hands the baton just like john mccain handed baton baton over to who you guys like his name is barack no it's not oh no did i delete it out don't you know that barack obama's real name is barry we'll get into him in a little bit i just remembered where he's at i need you to remember that barack obama is indeed barry okay you know barry right Barry from, hmm, where are we at? No, I'm not going to fast forward. I'm going to stay in order. Just remember Barry, who calls his wife Michael. And also that Barack and Scarab are the same, like the Scarabio Ra. So now let's look at Don John, <laughs> Donald John Trump. Guess who he succeeded, who he followed after? Well, let's look. We're looking for a Michael and a John, right? And his tie-in with Apollyon is already known all over the whole world now. His worship's Apollyon. But Apollyon's the destroyer who does what? Well, remember Mike. Michael. 
Donald John Trump's vice president was Michael Pence. What is happening? Why are we tossing these Michaels and Johns and Joes back and forth? I was like, what is happening here? This is bananas. So I was like, so you're telling me Donald John Trump had a vice president named Michael and his name is Trump Pence when you read it the other way? No way. And he was succeeded by a Joe, but preceded by Barack Barry? Well, that is weird because of this. Don't you know that Donald Trump also goes by John Barron, John Miller as well? Well, yeah, he does. Many times on his calls, he would answer the calls saying, I'm John Barron or John um, Miller. But you know what else he would call himself? Well, there's a reason why he called himself John Barron. The reason why he called himself John Barron is because his tie-in with Barron, Trump's marvelous journey to the center of the earth. So there you have another John Barron taking a journey to the center of the earth. To do what? Well, to discover all the stuff down there in a time machine. That's weird that John Barron and John Don Trump, which Don means Lord Donald, means ruler of the world. And then you have Trump, the last Trump of Babylon, the great that run with the Trump Pence, whose also name was Michael, the opener of the abyss, right? Weird. So I was like, that's super duper weird. But what's weird is when you look at John G. Trump, don't you know who John G. Trump is? John G. Trump is the one who's in charge of so much technology and stuff. Don't you know that? Don't you know he worked for the CIA and what he did for the CIA? Well, here's this. During World War II, Trump, not Donald Trump, John Trump, not Donald John Trump. This is John G. Trump. This is John George, like our time with the Georges and the Washingtons, like George Washington and George W. Bush and George W. Bush Sr. And also we've got George John Trump and the Washingtons we've been talking about as well. But watch this. You ready for this? Let's look at John G. Trump and what he did. During World War II, Trump switched from work on hospital x-ray. Let me make sure I'm still good on the chat. All right, you're ready. ready. During World War II, Trump switched from... Hold on. Oh, man. I didn't have my screen share going. Did I? Yes, I did. Okay, here we go. Now, here's this. We have John George Trump, okay? Here it goes. During World War II, Trump switched from work on hospital x-ray machines to research into similar technology, especially development of radar and ray guns. Because of this. Don't you know that this man is known specifically for doing this? In 1943, two days after the death of Nikola Tesla, okay, the FBI ordered Office of Alien Property Custodian to seize Tesla's belongings. Trump, John Trump. Donald Trump's uncle, Donald John Trump's uncle, was ordered to go into this room where Nikola Tesla died and to analyze Tesla's artifacts, which were being held in government custody. After a three-day investigation, Trump's report concluded that there was nothing which would con constitute a hazard in unfriendly hands. And yet, for some reason, this man decided to start developing magnetism things and x-ray things and radar things and ray guns and time travel machines, right? Well, here's this, okay? After that, you got to understand how Donald Trump came in the picture. Okay. Now, here's this. Let's go on a little further. Donald John, Donald John Trump and John G. Trump. Keep them in your mind, okay, because this is going to get nuts. Now we've got John Titter. It's strange that Donald Trump has also answered as Don John Titter. And do you know who John Titter was? John Titter's another time traveler. He was supposedly a real time traveler that came between 2000 and 2001 to tell people a bunch of stuff that was going to happen. It's weird, right? Well, let's look into it a little bit. John Titter. Okay, John Titter and Time Travel Zero are pseudonyms used on Internet forums between 2000 and 2001 by an individual claiming to be an American military time traveler. Don't look. Let me remind you. 
let me remind you, okay? This is Donald John Trump, the president, military man here. Okay. And this is John G. Trump. And this is John Barron. Weird, right? Okay. Check this out. This is John Titter here. John Titter. He was claiming to be an American military time traveler from the year 2036. Their post discussed various aspects of time travel and described future cataclysmic calamitous calamitous calamitous. That's a weird word. (laughs) Calamitous. Okay, events. Calamitous. Duh. (laughs) Wow. Including a global nuclear war. It's weird that he's predicting a nuclear war following world. I mean, in the middle of World War Three, and that's exactly what I'm saying too, as well. But would you know that his brother is also a John Rick as well? A computer scientist? It's weird, right? This whole John, John, John thing dealing with a lot of time travel stuff. There's been a mini decode on this man. We could sit here and read all this all together, all, all on and on and on and on and have your minds blown on this. But I got to get going, going on past John Titter because of this. Okay, don't forget. Donald John Trump, too. Okay, so here's this John Titter. Then we have John Barron. This is crazy, okay? John Barron also. Do you know what he's known for? The fall and rise of Ringenault. Now, once again, this is, you see the picture of the ocean? Okay, this is one and something else coming up. And I started looking at some other stuff that this man was tied into. I was like, what does this man have to do with darkness? What does he have to do with apocalypses? What does he have to do with the end of the world? Look at this man, what he's known for. This is crazy. The day the earth caught fire caught fire okay jigsaw um incense for the damned hitler the last 10 days the turn of a screw the taming of the shrew the funny side of christmas almas Allah, al cobra crazy a cat to catch a king 13 and dinner all right watch this though okay we have here emergency ward 10 no hiding place Plateau of Fear, Deadline Midnight, Ghost Squad, Tales of Mystery, um, Joan of Arc, Undermine, Out of the Unknown. It's crazy, right? Sir John, episode, The Midas Plague. He literally plays a guy named called John. And the Out of the Unknown, I want you to know that. That's nuts. Science fiction movie, a horror about coming out of the unknown. And he plays a guy named John. This guy does. The Avengers. We know about the Avengers. The portal opening from the sky and all that stuff. Well, you've got it. Same thing. Doom's Watch. You're noticing the pattern, right? I hope I don't have to go too much further down to get you to see that every one of these are the same type movies. Okay? Alice in Wonderland. The Man, I mean, it just don't get any more obvious. Okay? Crazy. So there's John Barron, the actor. And you see his whole pattern with you with the white hair and the white wigs of Freemasonry and everything else. But anyway, let's get past that. Let's look at Barack Obama here. Okay. It's time to get back on him. Barack Hussein Obama. Okay. It's important to know the Joes and the Georges and the W's and the Donald Trump's all once again in the same scenario here at a change of elections and stuff. But then you have this Alice. Think about Alice in Wonderland. I'm not kidding. This sound, you guys like, you're stretching it. Nope, you just wait, okay? We have this man here, Barry. You know where he was born? An island. It's important to know about Barry and the island, okay? Because of this. Please be next. Please be next. Yes! I found something crazy. Hope you guys can see this. You're going to get a kick out of this. This is Philip J. You guys might remember this on the news, okay? 2008. Watch this. This is Philip Berg against all these names that Barack Obama goes by. You ready? Barack Obama goes by Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Obama goes by Barry Sotoro. He goes by Barry Obama. He goes by Barack Dunham. He goes by Barry Dunham, the Democrat. This is all the names he goes by, but Barry's the main one. Barry's his childbirth name. Okay, this is saying where he's not um, eligible. To, uh, he's not eligible to be president. This guy is saying he's ineligible because of all the names he goes by and all the crooked stuff that he's doing. 
little to know this stuff got swept right underneath the word the rug this is a rabbit hole within itself i will try to copy and paste this actually in the chat box for you guys that'd be pretty cool copy now don't leave my video to go watch this um but let's see let me put my chat box up do, 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 do. Now, you guys know about Jon Snow, right, from um, Game of Thrones, the king of the north who discovered the Nephilims. I just want to remind you of him because I thought it was pretty crazy. But anyway, I just posted that that link you can copy and paste there at some point. Don't do it right now if you want to go in depth about this study on him. Now, check this out. I started looking at something. This is going to be cool, okay? Look, hey, guys. All right, so I'm a big nerd. I'm a big old nerd. I've watched every movie you can physically possibly watch, I think. And also my son, you know, is into superhero. He was into superheroes, all that stuff, games, all that stuff. So I started studying sports, started studying games, started studying everything you can imagine. Could you believe that Fortnite right now is opening an abyss with a treasure chest in the middle of the ocean and the Titan is rising out of it, even on Fortnite as I'm speaking right now? This was the whole background theme. And it's Zeus and Hercules and Hades. It's weird, right? Anyway. So I study all these games and stuff. But one thing I did was me and my wife used to love watching The Flash. Barry Allen, The Flash. Don't you know that Barry Allen is known for going in black holes and going in and out of time all through out time? Just like Barry Obama and Donald John Trump and all the other Johns. Well, guess who plays the original Barry Allen? You got it. John Wesley Ship. He is the original Flash. He is Flash Gordon. <laughs> this is Flash Gordon right here. Played by John Ship. This dude literally, John literally plays the Flash. But don't you know that he is the father of Barry Allen as well in the new Flash? Because they had to include him in the new Flash, so they got a time traveler there. It's weird, right? So now you have a John Traveler, John Tra John. Wesley ship, and this is the time with also the Johns and the ships. You remember, this all goes back to Nim to um Nemo, Captain Nemo and his ship going into the sea, which tied it into Raphael Sims, which tied which was the colonel, and he loved his his addiction to the bottom of the ocean, discovering all these weird things and Atlantis and all that all that stuff. But look, this guy right here plays Jay Garrett in um the New Age Flash. As the father of the Flash, who still can time travel, but in the old Flash, in the I think it was the 90s or 80s, sorry, guy, I'm not calling by old, but this man played the Flash, Flash Gordon. Okay, do you know what other stuff he was in? This is gonna blow your mind. Here it goes. Let's look at the same pattern happening. This John is once again never-ending story portals. Second to die. Um, star crossed. Port City, Separation Anxiety, Hell and Mr. Fudge, Night Sweats, um, Guiding Light, Fantasy Island. Would you know that John plays in Fantasy Island? Would you also know he's the Flash, like I said? And um, what is happening right now? Golden Gate, Jag, Strangers, Lost Treasures of Dulce. Oh my goodness, Batman. This is nuts. Everything I've been talking about Blind Spot, Supergirl, Arrow, Star Girl, everything that you can imagine. Right? So, there's the Flash, the time traveler. Don't you know who the Flash is? The Flash is, is not just Nimrod, but Zeus also with his lightning bolt. Okay? And it's also Apollo. With his bringer on the clouds of lightning and fire and brightness, wrath, okay? The blue flame fire that I've been covering a, lot, a whole lot, okay? But that's his tie-in with Barry as well, the time travel president who has his name in there involved with Don, John, and Joe, and Washington, apparently. But anyway, let's go a little further past this, okay? There's that. Then there's this. I started thinking about, but there was another Flash, right? Another Flash show? So I was like, yeah, this one was different. This one's about a kid named Ezra. Do you know who's the producer of this? The story's done by not just one John, but two Johns. You got John Francis, who's the, who made the story, and Jonathan Goldstein, who made the story of The Flash. About who? Well, The Flash, you can go around in time. John again. Weird. 
Weird. So I was like, that's super duper coincidental. So I went on even further. I was like, what about the Flash 2014 TV series? It's no way that this was developed. This is the one with uh, Grant Gudston as Barry Allen. Wouldn't you know, though, that this show was developed by Geoff Johns? Well, that's weird. There it goes again. Don't you know that Johns also developed Green Lantern, Aquaman, Flash, and every other Superman? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let's see what else this dude is involved with. I mean, the Flash. Well, there's a whole lot with the Flash, okay? We have went into three different Flashes and saw all the same stuff. So I was like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I have to look at, I have to look at Biff. So I started thinking about Michael J. Fox. Are you guys ready for another big banana sandwich? Do you guys know that Michael J. Fox's name, his middle name is not even a J. His real name is Michael Andrew Fox. He had his name professionally changed to Michael J. Fox. Do you know what the J stands for? Well, let's let's look at a little rabbit hole of, of the time traveler and Biff and his tie-in with John. You ready? And think about Donald J. Trump. Donald John Trump. You ready for this? Watch this, guys. Michael Andrew, Andrew Fox, known professionally as Michael J. Fox, is a Canadian-American activist and retired actor. He's known for a whole lot of stuff, right? Like Back to the Future. But watch. Now we're going to start noticing a pattern again. Nephilim's portals abysses you ready end of world let's think about it okay back to the future check secret uh, no, 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 no. teen wolf nephilim check okay then we've got where was it atlantis oh wow well that's weird <laughs> okay then you have Stuart Stuart little tied in with that as well and uh, let's see what else we can find here. I didn't go down this too much. So I already had so much bananas. But like I say, this guy, if you haven't put it together, he has the Michael, the Destroyer, the Guardian of the Abyss, and the John here once again. Pretty weird, right? And he's doing all his time traveling and stuff. Right? 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 So <laughs> let's start looking at his pattern again, okay? Bright lights, big city. Think about it. Light of day. Then we've got um, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. If you haven't seen that about the dogs that can apparently talk and travel and everything else, he's involved in that. He's also involved in, um, what's that? I can't even remember what it's called. But Stuart Little, same, same type thing. Um, blue in the face and cold-blooded. Don't you know where cold-blooded comes from? When somebody does something that like disrespects you, hurts you, or like whatever. Cold blooded becomes comes from blue blooded Satan. Okay, the serpent who's blue blooded, who's the blue blooded serpentine, who deceived and tricked and hurt them. That's where cold blooded comes from. When people are like, oh, that's cold blooded, cold blooded killer, because he killed and destroyed. Okay. So back in time, it was in a you know, it's all right here. See you yesterday. <laughs> Michael J. Bird. He played Michael J. Bird. Michael J. Fox played Michael J. Bird in Back Home Again. Weird. 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 All right. So there's that whole little can of worms. Then we got this. Okay. I just, I could go on and on with this time traveling. Man, Michael John and all the other Johns. Okay. So I was like, all right, that's, that's weird. But, you know, I started thinking more. Don't you know when he went back in time, what he did? Well, when he went back in time, one of the things that he did on stage, John, as Michael John Fox, goes back in time again through the portal playing Johnny B. Good. Okay, so let's go on a little further past that. It's weird, right? But do you know what's crazy? Look at this picture. Enchantment. Under the sea. Man, I love what I do. I really love what I do because there's not a lot of people that can do it in this world. The J stands for John. But look, if you look in the background, you see Atlantis and you see the rising of the beast from the sea and you see enchantment under the sea as John is playing his red guitar. All right. 
This is a good show tonight, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is way better than CNBC. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Next, we have this. Oh, yeah, this was it. Unfortunately, Michael Fox is already registered to another actor in the screen. So instead, check this out. This is going to blow your minds. He had his name changed to Michael J. In remembrance of Michael J. Pollard. You're like, but who's Michael J. Pollard? Michael John Pollock. Oh, his little name is John. Do you know what this guy who Michael J. Fox named himself after? Do you know what he's known for? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what he's known for? Well, let's, let's find out. Well, here we go with the, with the same guy that Michael John before does the time trial before. Let's see what he's tied in with. Okay. Okay. You ready for this? Tell me, um, where is it? The Lucy show. You know about Lucy? I love Lucy. Lucy and the stars. Lucy the light bearer. Same thing tying in again. I spy. We've got the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Okay. Think about Star Trek. Okay. Woo. And here's another one. Lost in space. He's got to be lost in the portals in space again. Then let's see what else we have here. What? He was in Hannibal directed by Michael. <laughs> this is nuts. Okay. And then, and then, would you believe it? Let's see what else we can find on him too. The Odyssey. Yep, there it is. Look at the serpentine dragon of the Odyssey. Would you believe it that he's in that too, Michael John? Mm hmm. Here's one of some other things Alfred Hitchcock movies. Yep, he's in those. The Destroyer, The Killer. Yep, let's see what else we've got. <laughs> Wild Angels, A Magic Mirror Lost in Space. We talked about some of these, but I want to see if we missed any because it's crazy. See, sunburnt angels out of the black. Can you get any more specific? Out of the black. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. So there's him. And then once again, it's time with Michael John Fox. Hmm. So let's go a little further. So I was like, I can't. I was like, I can't go any further, but I had to. So I found this book, The Abyss. Okay. Do you know who wrote this book, The Abyss? Everybody's like, James Cameron? No, <laughs> he's the one who directed it. Don't skip out on Michael. This guy's important. He's very important in this movie. I mean, book, okay? Would you believe who's in this abyss science fiction film and also book that I'm going to pull up as well? Hmm? Hmm? Would you? Well, let's look at this guy. Let's look at Michael. This dude. Uh, he's going to be coming up next. I think it's who it is. Yes. Let's look at him. And the fact that this, again, is Michael opening an abyss. Okay? I was like, what is this dude in, Michael, here? Hmm. I wonder how he's tied in with anything. Well, I started looking. Here we go. Clock Stoppers. The Magnificent Seven, Magnificent Seven Adventure, Inc. Hold on one sec. I want to get down to the bottom because I know it's, it's... Oh, The Terminator, The Abyss. Yeah. The Art of War, Apollyon, the Destroyer of the War. And then we got the Temerian Sun. Um, Adventure Inc. is about um, the island, by the way. Same thing. Look at that. Star Wars, The Walking Dead, The Mandalorian, The Blood Bond, The Victim. Look at the Blood Bond and look at the Victim. Then we have, I mean, it's just on and on and on. It's crazy to me. This is no such thing as coincidence. So I'm going to go further. I was like, I wonder if there's anything else about an abyss in Michael. I found this other book. It's called The Abyss of Insanity by J. Michael Beck. Now, don't get J. Michael Beck, the Arthur, confused with the character. John Thomas Parker. The main character is John, and he goes into the abyss of evil. So you have a J. Michael Beck. John Michael. Let's see. Let's see. His name is John Michael, but he goes by John Thomas in the book and he opens the abyss. Wow. 
and look a little further. I found this crazy. I found this crazy, beautiful artist online called John Michael Bird. And do you know what this portfolio is named? This is called the Abyss. This is John Michael's portfolio of the Abyss. See the top? Spring from the Abyss, painted by John Michael Bird. And I was like, well, that's weird, Bird. I've heard Bird before, but I'll get to Bird in a minute because of this. John Connor and the Terminator. Well, what about what about John from the Lost Island? You remember the movie, the show Lost, and his name John? I can't remember his name in the island. The main character John from the Island Lost. But then we got here the Abyss. I am the Abyss. Well, you know it. Written by John. Same thing. Michael Marshall Smith and John R. Little, and you have the Thomas here and everything else we're talking about. Okay. Same thing. Now we have this. I love that. Thank you, guys. Now we have this. This is another big old banana sandwich for the older generations, right? So I was like, I was like, okay, so I was like, let's look a little further. I looked online and I found the mock abyss world. Okay. On this gaming channel. This is the Mark Abyss World. Would you believe who's in charge of this? Mark Abyss World? Michael. John. Not even like saying that word. Look at that. I was like, what in the world? And he's bringing up beasts from the Abyss? I was like, that sounds a lot like Skeletor too. So I was like, let me think about He-Man. So I was like, what about He-Man? Wouldn't you know that the voice of He-Man is literally John Irwin? John Irwin is the voice of He-Man, who's in charge of fighting the biblical monsters who come up from the sea. And wouldn't you know, he's got blonde hair, blue eyes, and a Freemasonic Knights Templar cross on his chest. Prince Adam, she Ra. Like, <sighs> well, anyway, let's look a little further. Like I said, there's He-Man. Done by John. Also, John Irwin. First man to pop up right there. <laughs> Crazy, right? Do you know what else this man is known for? John Irwin, who is also He-Man, the time traveler. Because that's what he can do. He can do all kinds of things. He-Man. All right, let's go. John Irwin, I was like, well, this is weird. Wouldn't you know he also goes by Ram Man and Beast Man also? Hmm. Wouldn't you know also this? Let's look at his movies. Wouldn't you know that he was the radio sportscaster in Back to the Future? And wouldn't you know he's also in I Love Lucy? Whoa, that wasn't me. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, that's really not me. <laughs> okay, something's happening right now. All right. You remember you said God would speak through the thunder and the wind and all that stuff? Well, this, this is weird right now. That was weird. You guys heard it. I know you had to first. Sounds like it's straight up thundering right now on this thing. All right, so... Here we go. I must be on to something because they're trying to shut down my Facebook page, too. So, like I said, here's John Irwin. Don't you dare forget him. No, it really wasn't me. I wouldn't sit here and lie to, like, 126 people. So, I started thinking about Back to the Future. Don't you remember who's in... Don't you remember who's in Back to the Future? Well, don't you? Don't you remember who the wizard is? And Back to the Future. Don't you know that the main character also is blonde hair, blue eyes? This is the guy I want to think about right here. This guy is in. Okay. Well, I need you to know something. He's also in the Page Master, where he goes back in time into the Sea of Monster. Right? Sea of Monsters, the dragon, everything. 
Well, there it goes. Same man going back in time, and there's the sword in the stone pulled out by the blonde hair, blue eyed guys with the war of the Nephilim and the Raphaim. Used to be one of my favorite books. But wouldn't you know that Joe is also involved in this? Huh? Joe Johnson. <laughs> and here comes the circle. Wouldn't you know that Joe Johnson is also in what? Well, honey, I shrunk the kids. And Jumanji. Well, there's a circle we've been in. And Wolfman. Well, that's a lot like Michael J. Fox in the thing. Well, we also talked about the Avengers. Same thing. Why is he in that too? And why is Johnston? Why? Why is old Johnston in Star Wars 2? Why are they all in these same things? It's like they have this secret agenda that they all know. Hmm. Okay. Jurassic Park. He's even in Jurassic Park. Come on now. Come on. You got to be kidding me. Come on. There's no way. There's no way. October Sky. Wow. This is actually really getting crazy. I talked about Indiana Jones last night. This is really getting crazy, guys. I think I found the big. We talked about the Iron Giant last night. Howard and the Duck, you guys know about that show. Same thing. Battlestar Galactica, are you kidding me? Light and magic. Saturn Award, are you kidding me? Another Saturn Award for the best horror? What is happening right now? You know, he looks like a lot like the game maker in um, Hunger Games, too. Hmm. Let's go on past him. That was crazy. I didn't even have him in the sequence tonight. You guys saw that live. So here's this. Brings me to my next point. Time traveler's named Joe. Wouldn't you know that Joe versus the volcano was directed by John? Weird, right? And wouldn't you know that the one who created the poster was John Alvin? John Alvin made the movie poster. John Patrick is the one who directed it. Hmm. Something's going on, okay? If you're not picking up on this, this is crazy. It's really blowing my mind. Okay. Um, let's go on a little further. If you know about Joe Voss versus the Volcano 2, we've done a little decode on that, along with a really good decode on it you can find over at Enter the Stars, Casey. Um, yeah, same thing. There's your lightning bolt of Zeus as well, poly tied in with the Polyon, which is where you get your A from that volcano as well. The Destroyer, Malek, the Volcano. You've got your Volcano Sacrifice, everything, which is um, Telelok as well. So, there's that. Now, let's go on a little further. Because then there's Joe Allen. <laughs> Wouldn't you know that Joe Allen up there is also by exactly where we were talking about as well? Well, that's exactly where the Joe explored. Okay? I found this by looking at explorers named Joe. And this is exactly where Joe Allen is named after Joe, um, these words, who was once again a Polaris explorer who explores the North and the Arctic at the same time. Weird, right? So let's look a little fur further. I started looking back. You know, there's a, a whole thing called Explore Joe comic book series from 1950s. And you can, t I mean, you can look here as well and see the same names all over again. But here's Explore Joe 1951. I got pulled up two of these. The main thing I want you to look at is this. Don't you know who's in this? Well, they portray this, Admiral Richard Byrd, the Arctic Char Trail. This is about to get mind-blowing. So I was like, what the world? Richard Byrd, he did the Great Ice Wall thing, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. So he's the Navy naval officer, which ties in with our long list of naval officers, and especially Richard. The first one we talked about was Richard from two days ago. And here's this whole thing again with him. Do you know that Richard Byrd, do you know he's related to? You've got it. He is a direct descendant of, this is going to blow your mind. 
the discoverer of the Antarctica ice wall and the land beyond it, guys, is don't you know John Smith, right? John Smith, who discovered the new world and was the navigator and military man, right? John Smith, blonde hair, blue eyes. He was married to Pocahontas, right? They had a baby. They split up. Guess what else happened? Po Pocahontas went and married this man, John Roof, who is the great, 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 great grandpa of Richard Bird. Richard Bird's grandpa is John Smith, the discoverer of the New World, and Brother John, who Pocahontas is married as well, the discoverer. Well, well, well. But let's look a little further because there's more tabs. <laughs> so here we go with this big old rabbit hole. You guys know John Murphy from the show The 100? Do you know what John Murphy's known for? You got it. John Murphy wandered off with Jaha Theolonius. Okay, both of those being a word for like a god. Theolonius has the Washington word in it, right? You would think we've already covered all that. And the Jaha. Okay, but see, he's not the main, main, main thing here. See, him and Richard went off to find the, the him and John went off here to find a city no one knew about, a city of light, like Atlantis and everything else it talks about. Okay, they went off to find the city of light. Well, guess what he does? He discovers a Nephilim with one arm that is torn up by nuclear radiation. She is right. Where are you at? Where are you at? I have, I've seen every episode 10 million times. I'm not even kidding because I've got a big decode waiting for this for you guys. Where is she at? Um, I think she... No, 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 no. Is, that, is she the only one who's... No, that's Gaia. I know you're here. Where are you? Anyway. There she goes. Amori. Amori is a Nephilim. She, so you have another John discovering the city of light with the Washington, and he literally falls in love with a Nephilim, a girl with a mutated arm and everything else. Same thing there. Okay? But you also have their blonde hair, blue-eyed hero here, Clark. Like Lois and Clark, the discoverer of new worlds. Okay. What's crazy about this thing, though, is neither one of those. Instead, it's this man here is crazy. Watch this rabbit hole. Marcus Kane. Marcus Kane here is the. He's the one who technically saves them countless times as well. Many times. He's kind of like the sweetheart hero, the good heart hero of like the leadership. Okay. But something happened to this man I want you to pay attention to. Not only was Marcus Cain crucified on an X cross, he was the leader who was taken and crucified, hands, nails in his wrist, everything. He was crucified on this show as Cain, John Marcus Cain. But guess what? Marcus Cain, this man, was also crucified in what? This is going to blow your minds, man. Marcus Cain was also crucified in the gospel of who? John. In the gospel of John, the same man that plays Cain plays Jesus in this depiction and gets killed in the gospel of John. Is that not blowing your minds at all? There's the John thing. There's this man playing Cain, the time traveler, and he gets crucified in two different movies. John, 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 John. Okay, now let's go on a little further. So I was like, wow, let's start looking at Marvel series. Okay, you know, there's going to be another Back to the Future 4, and you know who's in it? Tom Holland, right? There's something about Tom Holland. <laughs> see, Tom Holland plays a character also in Marvel. And I wanted to see if they had, if Tom Harlan, who goes and joins Michael J. Fox, Michael John Fox and his time travel, and I wonder if him and his Spider-Man movies have anything to do with portals. Of course they do. But watch this. Don't you guys know that Spider-Man Homecoming with the portals is written by three different Johns? 
directed by John Watts, screenplay by Jonathan Goldstein and Jonathan Francis Daly, all with the same kid that is going to be in the time traveling movies. But not just that. Do you know who else is in this movie? You got it. Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah, Michael Keaton. You see him? Let's zoom in on Batman's Nephilimness and then the Washington Monument. Iron and clay, everything that can be decoded with this whole thing, okay? How do I get out of here? Back. Back. Okay. That's pretty weird, right? Same thing. Nuts. I was like, no way. This is still happening right now to me. How am I doing? How is this happening? Wouldn't you know also the music is by a guy named Michael? And it's 133 minutes long. And 88 Million. Just wanted you to see what I'm seeing, man, because it's starting to get crazy. And here we go, too. Wow. Do we need to talk about John Riley's many, many journeys that he's been on in cartoons and regular movies doing the same stuff? Okay, let's go a little further. Okay. All right, we talked about that. I want to close with the news I opened with, okay? The whole point of this video. Okay, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to close with the whole point of this video. A couple of months ago, I predicted that after the eclipse, a bunch of titans were going to emerge from the ocean. It was back in November, December. Actually, it was maybe even a little bit further before then. I started really picking up on stuff. The NASA launch rockets into the bottom of the ocean, the atomic bombs and the nuclear bombs set off in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Hiroshima, Japan, Nagasaki, Pearl Harbor. I went through all that stuff. I went through Pacific Rim decode way before. And then all of a sudden, you know... The eclipse comes, and the day before the eclipse, I was like, release the Kraken. The day after the eclipse, something was released from the ocean, the first anomaly that turned out to literally be the Kraken. And by the way, I can't take any credit for any of this. I am nothing. In my whole life, I spent wasting. But then God, when I went and wanted to die after losing my son, I wanted to give up. He's been doing all this ever since, and it just blows my mind. See, stuff started appearing in the ocean. The first thing was the Kraken, which we've done many decodes on here lately. Then the second one had a dorsal fin pushing out two massive waves, right, is what took place. Well, today, right before I went live, I think I was the first person online to catch this thing, literally. God lined it up so perfectly to put this in my hands when he did. Something happened today, guys, right before the live. You got it. Another anomaly came out from the tail of the snake with 80-some foot waves pushing out. This one has a whole different shape as you can see, than the other two. Okay? It's also important to know that our screen recorded too, so they couldn't delete this off my phone. Okay? I have proof of all this. I caught all this live. Okay? Here's the video. Get ready. Let me make sure I'm screen sharing. Um, nope, not yet. Okay, so here we go. Adding the stage. This was today. Today is Thursday, the 23rd, right? Okay, 8 a.m. this morning, there was nothing in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Where the, the head of Jordmangander meets the tail of Jordmangander, and the tail is supposed to release from the mouth and release all kinds of titans one at a time from the abyss, causing waves, tsunamis, and a beast to come out. First one was the Kraken, second was the Meg, and with this one is projected to be way bigger than both of them. Because I started the live around 7 o'clock, this thing does time periods. So I literally caught this live. No joke. So watch this. Here it is. All of a sudden, around 11 a.m., something opened up. 2 p.m. it was coming out. 5 p.m. is when I made this video. This is what was happening. It was coming out, already causing big waves. So after this point is only projected what they think it's going to do. Watch this. Way bigger projection than the first one. Watch how massive this thing gets. And it's not it, it's not going to push out like a wave like that. Okay, it's going to move around like the like the 
Kraken did the first time, literally take its shape and stuff. All this is projected. 84 foot waves. 84 foot waves. I screenshot it because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Now, a wave don't just start in the middle of nothing and, and do this, by the way. Crazy, 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 crazy. You're not going to find that video. Well, you probably will now all over the place. But so that happened today. Okay. We know that Apollyon, the destroyer, the bringer of wrath and destruction is supposed to come at the end of time and open the abyss. The scorpion king releasing the things from the underneath the earth. It's supposed to happen right there in your Bibles. Okay. Well, where can we watch this? Oh, on an app I have on my phone. Let me, I don't have my phone. So it's a, starts with a V. I have, my wife's got my phone. It's, like, it's actually at the top of this. This is a screen recording for my phone. It's V. Oh, you can't see it on the screen record. Um, v, I'll, I'll have to post it in the link after this. My son's got my phone inside right now. Um, but yeah, I keep track of this and earthquakes daily important to know that there's some crazy stuff happening in the world. Jordan Gondo's main thing is before that is birth pains. You know, the Bible talks about birth pains before Apollyon opens up the abyss. Thus, because the earth is giving birth to something. So the birth pains happen. Yes, Ventusky. Thank you so much. Man, I love you guys. I feel like I have to sit on my phone when I watch this live. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys. So that's that's that, right? So while I have 119 of you up here, which is a very small crowd compared to what should be up here, I'm going to ask you guys if you could just please, like, I, this was a lot of work, like, since the middle of the night last night. After I went live, I've been nonstop. It's been a lot of work. All I ask is just for you to hit the like button, subscribe button, or the notification bell just so more people can see this. Just get a jump in the algorithm, okay? Um, that's it. I will say this though. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to help out a little bit with the ministry, this is all I do. And as of today, Facebook has completely demonetized me, took away my subscribers and my subscription rights, took away my stars and my all my other things I can get up there, which was my only other source of income other than YouTube. And as you see on YouTube, I only have 3.7 thousand followers. So it's either I go with this. Or I'm going to have to get back to work doing something else in order to take care of this baby and the diapers and stuff. So if you guys want to help out, I do have my Cash App and PayPal down there at the bottom if you want to help out. If not, I'm going to continue forward either way. It's just it may be some more delays. Um, doing the best I can. I'll show you my background right now. What kind of stuff I'm working with. I am in a shack. Let me see. Oh, wait. I can't. That's my. Anyway, you get it. Um, anyway. I just want to share all this with you. I love truly sharing this stuff. I feel like it gets cooler and crazier every time. And I feel like I feel less and less crazy all the time. I feel like I feel like everything kind of just confirms. So love you guys so much. If you haven't already, be sure to follow my Facebook page, not just Beyond the Veil, which if you look at the bottom of the link, it shows Beyond the Veil Facebook. No joke. You click that link, it'll take you to my Facebook page. Okay. Um. Oh man, it looks like it's trying to kick me off with my internet connection right now. I hope not. But if not, also follow Dustin R. Bar. That's my name, Dustin R. Bar. And um, you can follow that page if anything ever gets shut down. That way you can find me. Okay. You are a giant pain in my. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You caught me off guard here, guy. I don't usually don't share stuff like this up here. But I was like, oh, man, I was about to call Melissa in on you to, to, to delete you. And then I read the rest of That's funny, man. Thank you so much for helping out. Okay. So if you don't know, by the way, like I said, there is indeed some beasts being released into our oceans right now. Do not be afraid, though. Know who comes at the end to save the day. Okay. Anyway. Let me get off here. I see some some good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you guys. 
Um, never going back to Facebook. Yeah, me neither. Trying. How can I help if I don't use Cash App or PayPal? If you're looking for money wise, I do have a Venmo. I don't know how to like share any of that up here. Thank you so much for the five dollars unveiled face. Thank you so much. Oh, cool. I'm gonna get off here though because I know my wife is inside waiting for me with the baby. But I love you guys so much. I have truly enjoyed every single second of this. Make sure you guys hit the share button and I will see you guys in a couple of days. Look, don't worry. I've already got like seven more lives planned of stuff that's going to blow your minds. Um, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this stuff is cool too, but it gets crazier. All right, Miss M, I see you down there too in Val and Erica. I hope you enjoyed your, I think, I think I remember Erica saying this is her first time up on a live, if I'm not mistaken. So I hope you enjoyed this. Miss Kelly, it's always good to see you. Don, Jesus King, it's awesome to see you here, bud. Um, man, it's, I don't even want to get off here, but I had to. My wife's going to get mad at me. Love you guys. Mean it. See you on the next one. Good night from Beyond the Veil.